Good morning and welcome to the Daily Share where we pray the word of God and bring it to life in our lives. John 14 verse 12, very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. New Living Translation, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. English Standard Version, truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. I shared on this scripture maybe ages ago, at least 18 months ago, when I was talking about, has, is, does anybody else see this verse? Do you, know, do you realize what Jesus was saying here? That, you know, what he did, we too are going to do whoever believes in me. So as long as you believe in him, you're supposed to be able to do the works that he did, basically. But we also need to remember what else did Jesus do that enabled him to do those works. Even though he was the son of God, he prayed all the time. He prayed early hours of the morning for a considerable amount of time. Remember when he went to um, that mount to pray with his disciples and they fell asleep? And he was saying to them, can, can you, couldn't you tarry at least one hour? Couldn't you pray with me at least one hour? Do you remember? Um, and he was, which means if he was saying to them at least one hour, that means he was praying more than an hour. Now, if Jesus being a son of God, with all the power that he possesses as the son of God, still had the need to pray, how much more we ordinary people, right? So... For, for, for him to do the work that he did, he fasted, that's for sure, but he prayed relentlessly. We need to be doing the same. I, I can't tell you how much learning I am, you know, submitting myself to these days to uh, apostles like Apostle Arome Osai on YouTube, um, Apostle uh, Joshua Selman, uh, as it happens, all of them, the ones I'm listening to, Apostle Michael Oropo, all of the ones I'm listening to at the moment happen to be Nigerians. Uh, God is doing amazing things in Nigeria. And, you know, it's just amazing the, 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 the things I'm learning from those teachers to a point where I felt inadequate to carry on with this daily share. Um, apart from all the other, just me being disorganized, if I'm honest, really. If God said to me, why have you stopped doing this, these daily shares? I, it's, it's mostly because I'm just disorganized. Um, you know, there's just so much on my plate and it's not an excuse, it's just reality. I, and I'm admitting my, my weakness is I'm disorganized, right? Uh, there are also challenges like internet and just having weak signals and things not uploading the way I want them to. It gets frustrating, but that's the point. That's part of the test, that's part of the challenge. But I only say this just to say, you know, all these things that Jesus did, he never stopped doing them just because they got difficult. Because he prayed all the time, his prayer life empowered him to be Jesus, not because he was the son of God. Uh, it, it took me up until recently to fully accept this, that Jesus didn't do what he did because he was the son of God. No, he did what he did because he prayed. Everything he did was to show us an example. And that's why he was saying, all these things I'm doing now, you too, as long as you believe in me, you'll, else, you'll be able to do them. You'll even do more. Why will we do more? Because we have the Holy Spirit with us, right? So it's worth reflecting on the fact that when you pray, when you, and I'm not just talking about a brief prayer, prayer life, which I had only until recently. I, when, I, when I thought I prayed, I didn't really, not, not compared to what I've, I've learned now, right? Um, so pray, a prayer life is a very intense life. In fact, you kind of find that you have to build your life around it. So for example, if you set yourself a target and say, uh, God, every 11 p.m. or every midnight, I'm going to get up and pray for an hour or 30 minutes or whatever. If you set yourself a target like that, you will find that everything else you do will be centered around that time because you're very protective of it. You have to be. If you really want to maintain a consistent prayer life, you have to be protected of your prayer altar. You have to be protective, sorry. Be protective of your prayer altar, meaning everything else you do is with, with your prayer altar in mind. If you know that going out with friends uh, is going to you know, make it harder for you to come back and pray at midnight because you'll be too sleepy and too tired, then you find that you find yourself altering all that. And you say, no, if I'm going to meet my friends, let's meet for brunch. I can't meet at night because it means I can't rest. So I'm nice and strong to pray at midnight because that's my schedule, that's my time, that's my appointed time to pray. You, you get very protective of your prayer altar. Let's build these prayer altars, guys. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.